tomorrow? Of course, it's senior year. I would never miss it. Are you going? Yeah, I am. Wait, aren't you the Hoko princess? Yeah, I totally beasted those games at the assembly today. Yeah, right. Do I have to call you your majesty now or what? That's a little too far. I just love Hoka Week. All these spirit days, Hoka proposals, it's so awesome. Yes, all the fun leading up to the big event. Hey, did you buy your outfit yet? Of course. It's tomorrow, did you not? Uh, no. You better get on that ASAP. Yeah, time to head to the store tonight. <sighs> anyway. I'm Vonch. And I'm Grace. And welcome to show one, two, three, four, Hoka Edition. Edition. This morning, California senior senator Diane Feinstein passed away at the age of 90. Feinstein was a hard worker and made a positive and progressive impact on our country. Tune in next week for a full story. If you want to stock up on some food right before heading to Hoko, make sure to check out 9 Air Ranch Market in the mall. The grand opening is tomorrow at 9 a.m. Stay tuned to find out more about this new addition to Arcadia coming up next week on our show. The sunny city of Long Beach hosted a coastal cleanup that all students in AP Environmental Science were encouraged to attend. Let's head over to Amel on site to recap this awesome event. Thanks, Bonch and Grace. This Saturday, AP Environmental Science students took to the beach with the hopes of making it just a bit cleaner. It's nice to be here in the sun, surrounded by sand and water. Unfortunately, we are also surrounded by piles of trash, a problem these students are trying to improve here at Belmont Pier. To give us more insight into this event and its effects on the environment are Miss Ung, Miss Nguyen, and Miss Kuso, the AP Environmental Science teachers. I love the beach. Yeah, this is why um, one time of the year I try to gather as much, as many students as I can out here. Uh, well, cleaning up the beach definitely helps in beach restoration. Uh, so we want to make sure any type of you know microplastics or debris don't end up going back into the ocean, or even like the wildlife on the beaches. We don't want them to be eating it and choking it, choking on it and dying. So for apes, one of our requirements is that students get out into the community and do service learning. So we figured, why not have us teachers come out with them, encourage more students to come out, and then also it's a good bonding event for all of the ape students. We interviewed some AP Environmental Science students who came out to help make a difference by picking up trash left on the California coastline. Let's hear their thoughts on the beach cleanup and all the interesting things they found. You know, it's a great day to come clean up trash. I, you know, we love the earth. You know, this just seemed like the best day to come. Toilet seat. And the hard rest. Yeah, I was very surprised at the, this traffic pylon and uh, this light fixture. It's been so nice to give back to the environment today. We had some fun, enjoyed the beach, and worked hard. Now back to the anchors in the studio. High school can be tough, but you don't have to go through it alone. That's why we have an amazing selection of skilled peer tutors available to help you with whatever you need. Visit peer tutoring and outreach in the library after school from 3.30 to 4.30 on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, 3 to 4 on Wednesdays, and 3.30 to 4 on Fridays. September 15th marked the start of Latino Heritage Month in the United States. It's a time for celebrations and gatherings to honor the Latino culture. Let's go to Kylie to learn more about the significant month. Feliz mes de la herencia latina. Happy Latino Heritage Month. We are here at Placito Vera where celebrations for Latino Heritage Month are in full swing. Latino Heritage Month is celebrated annually from September 15th to October 15th. During this time, we honor the rich cultures, histories, and contributions of Latinos in the United States. September 15th is a significant day for several Latin countries. Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua all celebrate their Independence Day on the 15th. Mexico celebrates its independence from the night of the 15th to the 16th of September. Chile celebrates its independence on the 17th and Belize on the 22nd. This month allows us to recognize and celebrate the many diverse Latino cultures and customs. It also celebrates our achievements, how far we've come as a community to be where we are today, have the opportunities we have now, and the ability to express our culture without restraints. But what do all these dates mean? And why is this month important? It's important, in my opinion, for most Latinos to identify themselves, to feel that they belong, and to embrace our beautiful culture. Um, it's important, I think, for any culture to be able to celebrate their culture and share it, just because it's unique and something that people don't see or don't quite understand. 
and by doing that it's important to share and maybe you get to understand a little bit more about that culture or why they do certain things the way they do. We do a lot of different traditional Latin things that are done down in Mexico and other South American countries and we bring it here so that the people of LA can enjoy and be able to um, see what the differences are and the uniquenesses are of the different cultures. I think as parents have the responsibility to not enforce it but to live it with them so that you can teach by example. Come visit La Pesito Verde where the spirit of Latino Heritage Month is alive and thriving. Desde el Centro Los Ángeles, soy Carly, regreso al estudio. Homecoming is not just about the dance. Today after school, before the homecoming football game, Link Crew is hosting their annual homecoming tailgate. Head to the rally court from 3.30 to 5.30 to get some food from the food trucks, play games with your friends, and get your faces painted. See y'all there! Last Saturday, Ruben and Clay's 20 years and one night performance took place at Arcadia High's very own PAC. Let's go to Henry for a behind-the-scenes scoop on last week's historical performance. Thanks, guys. Last Saturday here at our very own Arcadia High School PAC, Ruben and Clay started their 20-year and one-night performance. Let me take you on a behind-the-scenes insight of what really happened. So behind the scenes, honestly, it's a lot of just camaraderie and being able to talk to everybody and just having fun backstage. We always try to make it fun because otherwise, why would you be here? What's really cool about this event is that we have professionals working alongside of our stagecraft students. So we have a professional lighting director who came in and programmed all of our moving lights with a lot of audio backing it. From the audience's perspective, the amazing performance celebrating their 20 years of friendship and brought back euphoric memories of their time on the show. The stage crew excellently crafted an artistic atmosphere and highlighted all of their best moments with radiant lights and outstanding effects. Not only did their hard work show through in the stunning performance, but it also provided as an experience to sharpen their craft and work alongside industry professionals. We talked to two of the students that had the opportunity to work Saturday night. For this event, we had to have more people on the crew, including student workers as well as more professionals. I would say every show is different in their own ways. For this show specifically, we set up risers and we also put strip lights around the risers. And it's just what the client wants and how they set up their equipment. Major respect for StageCast students and Mr. DeLuca. Can't wait to see what you guys have planned for Sleepy Hollow and upcoming performances. This has been Henry Frost. Back to you guys in the studio. So Vanch, have you thought any more about what you're going to wear? I'm going to be honest, Grace. I don't even know when or where homecoming is, let alone what I'm going to wear. Oh goodness, you need some serious help. Homecoming is a big deal. Yeah, all I have to do is somewhere out there to tell me all the information I need to know. Mr. Volt emailed us like five times. Whatever. We made a video summing it up. Here's Andrea with everything you need to know to have a fun and safe homecoming. Homecoming is tomorrow, so here's some information to ensure a fun and safe night. Poco will be located at the Natural History Museum. Doors open at 7.30 and close at 8.30. Students may leave the venue at 10 p.m. and must be out by 11. You can get dropped off or park at any of these locations. In order to get into the venue, you must have your student ID. Here are a list of things you may not bring into the venue. Attire is semi-formal. This includes mini and maxi dresses, blazers, and dress pants. Make sure to wear shoes that you're comfortable in. Also make sure to eat beforehand as there won't be a full course meal, but there will be snacks. With these mandates in mind, make sure to have a fun and safe night. See you guys there. Wow, thank goodness. I feel so informed now. Thanks, Andrea. Hey Grace, speaking of homecoming, more specifically the homecoming game, where do football players dance? Where? At the football. Ha ha. You're so funny that I actually forgot to laugh. But actually, the dance at homecoming. Yeah, way to ruin the joke. You know what else football players do? Play football. Let's head to Mars to hear more about football and other sports that took place this week. Wait, I don't get it. What do you not get, Mark? How can the football players be at a ball? You can't be at an object. Let's just drop this. It's not worth it. Mark, you dropped the ball. Oh, okay. 
Speaking of dropping the ball, girls volleyball did quite the opposite. Here's Shears to talk about the latest game for girls volleyball. Thanks, Mark. On Thursday, our Apaches tried their best to continue their streak as they matched up against the Bulldogs from Pasadena High School. To start off the game, the Apaches came out hot as the girls' offense was relentless as they were able to quickly rack up points on the board. Taking the first set, the Bulldogs attempted a comeback, trying to get any points they could, but were unable to fully match with the Apaches. In the end, the Apaches were able to run away with the win with a set score of 3-0, continuing their unbeaten record in league games. Great efforts by our girls this week. Their next game is on Thursday, where they'll be facing the Burbank Bulldogs here at the North Gym. This is Mr. Yersh, now back to you, Mark. Thank you, Shears, and great job to the girls' volleyball team. In the beginning of the week, girls volleyball had a tough game where they lost 3-0 to Village Christian. On Tuesday, the girls' tennis game beat Crescenta Valley with a score of 10-8. On that same day, girls' volleyball swept Hoover with a score of 3-0. Also, boys' water polo took a win against Burroughs with a score of 16-3. On Wednesday, girls' golf went against the Bell Golf Club with a score of 2-0-5. On Thursday, girls' tennis faced off Burbank with a score of 14-4. Also, boys' water polo went against went ahead to head against Murr with a score of 19 and 9. Nice work Apaches. And don't forget to check out our live stream for the homecoming football game today at 6.45. You can check us out live on Apache News YouTube. That's on the sport for the week. Now back to the anchors at the desk. What a fun show this has been. Yes, I enjoyed anchoring alongside the junior princess herself. Of course, of course. I look forward to seeing what outfit you pull together for tomorrow. And I look forward to your little royalty dance on the dance floor. And of course, the mosh pit. I'm gonna go crazy! Yeah, okay, we'll see about that. <laughs> Just you wait. Anyways, see you all there. We can all judge Grace's dance moves together. Guys, please don't be too harsh. Also, make sure you guys follow us on all of our social medias down below. This has been Vonch. And Grace. Anchoring Show 4. four.